I'm Pastor Bill Rosen, ordained Pentecostal pastor. I, uh, I'll be 91 in October. I was only four, four or five years away, and I used to run down to Grandma's place. One night I was sleeping in bed with Grandmother. Yeah, I, I woke up and I looked up like that in the ceiling, and here's a red eye up there in one corner. I started to sweat and a bit of fear and all that kind of thing. I said, I'll have another look. I just took the blanket off. It's over this corner this time. And I woke Granny up. There's something here, Granny. And he said, oh, are you all right? Only Auntie looking after us. He said, Auntie taking care of us. They were devil worshippers. That was our life. We didn't go along, we were frightened. You know, we were afraid of that. To grandmother it was natural. Yes. One time grandfather came racing down to our, our little shack, calling out to my dad. Georgie, Georgie, he said, come. Telephone, telephone. Telephone meant these things. Hundreds of them in the air, screeching. Trying grass on the roof, trying corn stalks on the roof. It's making a terrible, deafening noise. He stood at the step and he said, Dad, he said, go in there and find my old Bible. Dad opened the Bible up and put it on the step. It was immediately the effect on those spirits. Devastating. They just, all you can hear, they cry going away in the distance until no more. That's the power of one Bible. They know. They know. They see the thin line of redemption right through from river. Genesis the Revelation. <laughs> yeah, praise God. They know. The other relations of ours, they were hard, violent men, you know, alcohol and gambling and fighting. Those fellas got saved. Yeah, they got saved too. Yeah, turn to the Lord. It was about this time that my grandma uh, was very sick. She must have been down for about six months, just skin and bone. The doctor had her in for one night and told dad to go back and pick her up because he could do nothing for her. So she came home and she, she wanted to die there. These uh, relations of ours, who was saved recently, they heard about grandmother's situation. They came up and they offered to pray for granny. Dad said, well, if you want to pray for mum, that's okay, but you'll never change us. So they prayed from about five o'clock that afternoon, the grandma, five o'clock that afternoon went home. Next morning, grandma sitting up on the bunk, completely transformed, just as though she'd never been sick. It's a miracle. My parents, just, they were just shocked. But it didn't take long for the bridge people, folk, to hear about grandmother's healing. Work was forgotten for the day. <laughs> All they could talk about was the Lord and had to start to sing, and mum and dad just sat there. All the fights going out of them now, you know. They, they, they could see there's the evidence there, you know. <laughs> uh, grandma's healed. They uh, promised wholeheartedly that they would be under church on Sunday. But as we walked through that door, I felt that strange feeling. But it wasn't a feeling of anything evil, but it was an awesome feeling that renders you useless. I knew then I was walking into the very presence of God. Yes. My parents felt the same thing. They were gloriously saved that night. Yeah, they found that God who oh, healed grandmother. <laughs> yeah. She outlived my parents. She had lived my two sister-in-laws, but Granny lived for God. I remember her praying in a broken English, and she'd pray and pray and pray all around the boy. When it came to meal time, just to say grace, she would just pray on and pray on. And grandfather would get his meal would go and cold, he'd start eating. <laughs> uh, he said, "Well, you long time," she said. To him. <laughs> yeah, but you know, everything turned for the better. Out of that four roses, kids, my sister became a missionary open of Kimberley's. 
Then Pastor Charlie became a pastor, and I became a pastor. I can tell you three or four times during my lifetime, I came face to face with death or something. See, God was keeping me for a purpose. Another time we come home from school, we start to put the horse in their can and she stumbled. My brother Charlie was thrown clear, but me, I went straight over her head and onto the ground, and the horse full went, come down, boot on top of me. I couldn't breathe. I got up and everything went black. I stood there, a lot of hole in my belly. I could have died at that, that, that time, but I'm still here. Another time I was, we are timber cutting. My 12 year old brother was shooting brown pigeon up the road with a rifle, and the bullet ricocheted. And, bzzz, and that bullet disgraced me like that. They could have had a dead man, a dying man. They're 50 miles from anywhere. Yeah. I can't. <laughs> There was a meeting on that night. We walked in and there was people were up front sort of testifying and talking. And I saw a bit of an opening and I got up and went out and told them what happened out the bush that night. After the meeting, Auntie Lizzie, that's the, that's the other auntie, she said, today, this afternoon, five o'clock, God spoke to her that a death angel were passing down Buller and to pray for the victim that he will not claim it. She got down there and she opened her heart out to God, she prayed. And the children coming in and looking at the door, so what's wrong with mum making all this noise? They saw mum about this high off the ground floor. That's when she must have broken through. And I often wonder why God didn't us go and see the pastor, but she he picked this little mother. When that girl was, was younger, grandfather used to say, speaking in tongues was of the devil. He didn't believe it, but he came to church but he thought that was, that was the devil. But one day he heard that same young lass speaking in fluent Filipino, telling about the love of Jesus. He just cried, he just cried. This one God, this one God. He became a born again Christian. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> See, God doesn't leave us in the dark. That's even you want to know, yeah. Things like that happened those days. You don't see it again today. No. Satan has been very successful inventing new worldly enjoyment. Mobile phone, texting, all that. That's why I, I try not to watch television if I could. Yes, I, I made a promise to God I won't wait to watch that stuff because there's too much rubbish on it already. Yeah. When I think of Charles Finney and all these fellow great men of God, they never had those things in those days. Hundreds and thousands of them just wept before God. And God did something when he changed the whole town. That can happen here. We've got to raise the people here. The Peters and Johns are here. The Pauls are here. Praying people get down and pray around the clock until they feel that anointing come on them. I really want to get closer to him, you know. Yes, even at my age, I can't preach anymore, but I can win souls. I can make disciples. When you go to a church today, you'll see them all sitting in there. They're supposed to be out there making disciples. And that's the last thing Jesus told them. Make disciples of all nations. That's not hard. I've given you power to do all that. We've got more power than the devil has now. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. Don't wait any longer. Get yourself right with God. You know, get yourself right, get close, and ask the Lord to sanctify you, body, soul, and spirit. There's only one, one way. There's only one flight out. No, no second flight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah.